And we are live. Ayo, just want to real quick uh, thank you for uh, dinner last night. That was very, very nice for you to give me a call. We were here at the house. We had nothing to eat. I figured that. You called me. Yep. Told everybody I'm out. <laughs> Went and had dinner with you and your daughter. I appreciate it. You're we welcome. had a good, we get it. We, where do we end up? Um, Westport Flea Market. Westport Flea Market. Yes. That's right. Uh, and it was uh, half price hamburgers. Anytime I can treat you out for a half price meal, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, that was dope. Yep, you're welcome. But you're you welcome. cut you cut my burger in half and you ate the other half. So how was that? I need to get my protein. Okay, I need to get a gram of, of protein for every <laughs> pound I am. So uh, oh damn! So I, yeah. I think I think the burgers were a half pound. It was a lot of protein going on over there. Yeah, yeah. Good burgers, yeah. But... yeah. How did you ask for it to cook? I know. I asked for mine. I'm asking for both of them medium well. And they were well. Well. Barely. I know, right? I was <laughs> barely like, well. Yeah. 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 They were good though. Yeah. Don't really get me good. wrong. No. They're yeah, no, though. They're really good. And then we got to listen to Stranded in the City, of course, uh, who uh is our intro and outro. I appreciate you guys for Very helping kindly. us out there. Yeah. Yep. Uh so real quick, you had a story that you were telling me and I and I I couldn't remember what we were talking about. I mean, what? Which story? The story when? about you, you lip sync, lip syncing. What grade was that? Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. Um, so I started listening to uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates on my Spotify because I heard a podcast with Daryl Hall on it, and that kind of inspired me to jump on to listen to their station. Yeah, and and then you remember, and then I remember listening to one on one on one with their mega hit. Oh, what right? on Do you remember what? that? Right. Yeah, I was right. trying to remember what song it was. Yes. I thought it was Man Eater. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Seriously thought because it had the saxophone in it because I said something about yeah, what no. you do when the saxophone was played. No. And then <laughs> no, you, no. you had that, that one on one seventh grade talent show. We did lip syncing <laughs> and uh, I picked uh, that song and we did it in class. And I thought it was a one time deal. Yeah. And. It and everybody else did very well. We yeah. all did well, and then they, the teacher made it a uh, a whole school thing, and to do it in front of the school, mm -hmm. which was sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and then it became uh, it became uh, horribly nerve wracking because I was good doing it in front of like twenty twenty five people, yeah. classmates that I've you know been going to school with for years, and then I got to do it in front of eighth graders, um, and, and the rest of the school, and it was just it turned out to be fine. I'm great. Yeah. So who, sinker. who was your partner though? Because it's Hall and Oates. No, Daryl Hall is the only one who sang. So I did all the singing. Oates didn't sing in that one. Oh, he didn't sing in that yes, song. Yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, have you ever been in? Have you ever done a lip syncing thing? Not quite. Not, they didn't do that. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I know because I did that my fifth grade year. Oh, fifth grade year. My in fifth grade. Right, right. We right. had that was our uh, that was our outro to get out. So we did a talent show. And the whole thing was lip syncing. What was your song? So well, it wasn't my song. I mean, but you said Daryl Hall and John Oates, and uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bobby Delgado and I did that. You were Daryl Hall and John Oates. One, one of us one. was the blonde guy, and <laughs> that's Hall. That's Daryl Hall. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of us. I, I don't, we didn't wear wigs or anything like so that. You did man. I either. mean, so I don't remember what we did. Uh, no. Yeah, we did. No, I don't know if that song was even out yet. You didn't do You Lost That Loving Feeling? No, they, not that they, one. They covered that one, too. No, so. shit. I can't remember which one it was. Well. Anyway, but when I hear it, I was, you know, it sparks up a memory. You think of Bobby? Which a lot of, that's my boy, Bobby D. Shout out, Bobby D. You, yeah, he always listens. He lets me know he listens. It's. it's I cool. don't believe him, but that's cool. Shout I'm out, serious. Bobby D. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's just get started with the show. Take two is what one I'm on calling one. this show. One on one. <laughs> uh, this episode is sponsored by Quinn Concrete Construction. The company motto, no job too big or too small. Whatever your concrete need is, they have the experience and the professionalism to ensure a quality job any every time. For a free estimate, call 913-279-1448. That is 913-279-1448. And uh, ask for Mr. Joe Quinn. And he'll give you that estimate for free. Free. Anything free is good, right? Nothing's for free. Just but, like my hamburger was last night be. was free. Not everything. So. Not everything free is good. That's right. Well, no, that yeah, you're you're very right on that, Chris. Very Thank wise. You. Yes, you're right. Chris. <laughs> uh so yeah, let's get started. Uh, hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Big Modcast. And without further ado, please welcome our guests for the evening, uh, Mr. Aaron Sawyer. 
Yeah, Thank you for good. having me. Thank you for having me. Right on. Right on. <laughs> yep. Thank you for joining us. Um, Coach, I was thinking about this earlier, and of course, my producer had asked me, when do you stop calling him Coach? You know, so how do you go about that? Uh, so I call you coach because you coach my son Marcos in football, of course. Right, right. And I know you've coached. I know you've done some coaching here and there. So, like, does that ever stop? Do you like if the kids that come around to see you, do they still call you coach? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, coach. So, they if they just Sawyer, um, it's kind of like however they address me at the time. Like I'm, I'm here yeah. for you know. So I'm, I'm, I may be the only 53 year old out there maybe calling you coach. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure if uh, if Marty Schneider, if he saw you, he would call you coach because well, he he still does that with me. Once in a while, it's hey hey coach, what's going on? You know, because I coach with them. Yeah, yeah. When we used to coach these guys back in the day. Um, but yeah, I was just wondering about that, and, and I meant to ask you that. And uh, Jose was the one that brought it up and says, "How long are you can keep calling him coach?" I'm like, Jose, the producer. Yeah. Um, coach of what? Shawnee Mission North? North, yeah. At the football. time, it was football and track. Okay. And from yeah. what year to what year? Uh, let's see here. About, what, 20, the end of 2012, I believe, to maybe 2018, end of 2018. Okay. Like that, yeah. All right. And and for those who don't know, Shawnee Mission North, for those outside of the Kansas City area, Shawnee Mission North is a high school in the, is it Mission? Overland Park area. It's, yeah. Yeah. Mission yeah. Overland Park, right? Yeah. yeah. And in the KC Drive, Metro area. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And actually, I take that a bit more like tw- Maybe 2020 or 2021. Okay. Years might be off a little bit. Right. Yeah. And you, yeah, that's hard to. And you were the coach for or what part? Well, like, was it the receivers? Yeah, or? yeah. So, I, yeah, the receiver group. Yeah. Wide receiver coach, you know, okay. position I played as well. And my first year with Simmons was actually coach running backs. You know? Okay. And then I moved to that wide receiver spot after that. And you, you you coached or you wanted to coach there because um, that's your alma mater? Yeah, always, you know, get okay. back 100%. And uh, also with the receiving crew, I can't forget that, Landon Morrell. Mm-hmm. Oh, kinda, yes, 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 Coach Morrell. We both coincided. We were like, you know, 50-50. We played together as well, believing a lot of stuff, how receivers should play the game and oh. run routes and all that okay. stuff. So, yeah, we evenly kind of So you played together, responsibility. coached together? Yeah. Oh, okay. That doesn't yeah, happen yeah. very often. That's often at all. That's a pretty cool combo. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, Coach Murrell, how's he doing? I haven't, I haven't seen he's, him. He's doing good. Um, I'm not sure if he's actively. He may be coaching track still. Don't quote me on that. Okay, but he's over there at um, Trail Ridge. Oh, Westridge. Really? Excuse me, Westridge. West okay, off 95th. Uh, still doing. You know, the P coaching and everything, yeah. uh, teaching everything, and yeah. So I'm assuming you're a. Just based off of you know what you look like, you're a multi <laughs> multi sport athlete in high school. Or, or were you? I mean, I'm just assuming that's what the case was. And if it was, what what were the sports? Yeah. So we were a football in the fall, uh-huh. basketball in the winter, mm-hmm. and track in the spring. Okay. Okay. Uh, we did that all four years when we were up there. Okay. All right. Do you, do you still have your Letterman jacket? Did you have a Letterman he, jacket? He, he would like to wear it. Yeah. We'd I'll sport it for digging. you. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to do some digging. We, yeah. I think we have one somewhere. Yeah. I didn't talk to my mom about that. Yeah. Do you have? Were you one of those dudes who wore it? That's cool with all the medals, <laughs> clang, 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 just all just walking around. I had too many medals. Man. Every every time <laughs> you flexed your, your pecs, they did the, the, the uh, medals would clang. Yeah. Dance. <laughs> yeah, just like that, just like that. Was there any other sports that you that you would have played if you didn't play football? You would have done something else, basketball. I mean, the, from just the hoop dream. Yeah, you know, it would have been fun to play basketball in like college or something, but. I had to be realistic of my skill set and how tall I was at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, something we had talked about before, but yeah, a deciding factor for me, because I grew up playing basketball. My dad was a basketball player. He definitely pushed it oh, on me. But right. figuring out that, you know, my strength was football. It was, you know, my build and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had got that media guy from K-State after I started getting recruited my sophomore year. And I looked through that roster and was like, man, I'm bigger than every DB yeah, receiver yeah. on the roster. I bigger, think I'm gonna focus on football. Bigger weight, height, yeah, growth? height and weight. Okay. Yeah. What was your vertical high school? Ooh, so I'm um, assuming you dunked. If we're going, quite a bit. oh yeah, yeah. We, okay, we was banging out. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I did in high school too. <laughs> I wish I could Coach, believe why you laugh? I wish I could believe that. <laughs> He's like, yeah, right. <laughs> Fact check. Fact check. Well, okay. I, I heard the story dunk. about touching the <laughs> bottom part that holds in the net. That's there me. we go. I'm the, I, I touched the bottom of the net and I'm That's, good. Which essentially is still the rim, so I'll give it to you. <laughs> uh, it's an extension of you, the rim. I think yeah. I even broke a nail. Right, it yeah. might have been a nail that I just yeah. Okay, just but for, um, 
I don't think I was over 40. I think it was like 36 or 37. Okay. You know, I got pretty long. I'm about 6'3 on a good day. I right, got pretty right. long arms. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's why Marcos is 6'1. Right, son? Because I'm six foot. <laughs> he's a little taller than you, so so yeah, he's about With six one, six two. About six one. So anyway, yeah. so real quick, yeah, let's just um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, coach, uh, I'm sure everybody that is sitting here watching, watching the episode, they see you, and of course, they 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 see you, Bill. They're probably wondering, what do you do for a living? Gotcha. What what is it? Do you do, coach? Yeah, so I'm a um, independent contractor. I'm a personal trainer. You know, I'm the owner operator of ASAP Training, and I've been doing this for the past. This is going on eight years and I provide, you know, weight training for people. I provide nutrition. I provide a different insight that typically they can understand a little better. It can get real complicated. It can seem like a lot of stuff. And honestly, it is. Yeah. But I just try to simplify that situation to make it make sense for people. Just not to try to talk over their head with it, you know, all the fancy jargon and nutrition and macros is and really try to break it down to where they can understand it and start to implement it to their own lifestyle. Man, yeah, that's. Did you get all that? Yes, that's I got cool. it all. Yes, I, I just can't. I just can't. Can't implement fathom it. it. I can't implement it in my in my lifestyle. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm assuming it's a pretty disciplined lifestyle. And the toughest part of it probably is the diet. 100%. I mean, okay, and, and is, not, not just for you, but also for the clients. Yes, for the clients as well, because it's the diet thing. We have to do it. We have to eat, unless you're not from this planet. Which right. I think everybody is. Well, right. What was that rumor going around? They were, they're amongst us. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> I think they are. I think they really are. But, um, you know, you have to eat every day. So if we can capitalize on starting to put the right stuff in, understanding, you know, the right and wrong foods, the clean and good stuff, and start to build some habits around it. That's really what it takes. Sometimes we got to break some habits from our childhood because we usually learn how to eat and function in that situation from who our parents were. Right. So sometimes our parents have the good habits. Sometimes they didn't have the best. And as long as we're still like trying to take a step in the right direction and changing day after day, because yes, we like the aesthetic and being big and strong, but yeah. the overall health, you know, the blood work in the long run is the ultimate goal anyways. So, so is that what you recommend when somebody starts to get some blood work to see where they're Definitely. at? Definitely. See, see what the blood work's at. That's a, that's a big one. And it's a lot more accessible and cheaper nowadays too. It's a lot of, I mean, I work with a company called Pinnacle Health uh -huh. and they, uh, you know, they'll run some brown work for me and it's just to see what's going on inside. You know, it's a little more, usually those panels are a little more extensive than what you even can get from the doctor. So it's just a good place to see like, okay, I'm eating this type of food. I'm doing this type of activity. Let me see if this is really complimenting what's going on with my body. Cause sometimes we have intolerances for certain type of foods that, are always recommended for us and we eat them anyways mm. and they can be everyday clean food bananas fruits certain type of oats rice like some people have some intolerances that they're not supposed to put in so i see you can see that from the blood work sure sure yeah. yet the only thing i have done had done was like cholesterol uh that's pretty much it and then sugar yeah to see yeah and i think i i think there's good and bad cholesterol and then there's the sugar and luckily right now yeah, not diabetic yet. Good for but you. If it gets out of control, yeah, I'm, I'm there already. If uh, I would have went to you, coach, and you would have said, "Yeah, let's do some blood work," you probably would have said, "You know what? You need to go to the ER. <laughs> <laughs> get take care of yourself. I don't want. I don't want to deal with you. You go take care of yourself because uh, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your diabetic." You're fat, you're. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, speaking hey. of, remember that one time we went to we, we went to the flea market. You mean yesterday, we no, not, <laughs> we went we went to the flea market like we started off with uh, a month ago. Oh, yes, and yes, the waitress yes, yes. comes by and she said, "Would you guys like something to drink?" And I said, "Yeah, I'll take a Pepsi." And then she said, "Diet Pepsi." <laughs> How was I supposed <laughs> to take that? Yeah, you know, yeah. I was like. Yeah, get a hint. Take a hint. <laughs> yeah, she's, yep, Take a hint. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, I, no, she didn't hear me. But you said she said, oh, well, whatever. I was like. Anyway. Then she brought him back. Then she brought him she, she brought diet. Me, she, no, she brought, it was watered down. Person. Well, it tastes like a diet. I know, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah, it was horrible. It was pretty bad. Yeah, uh, how can we uh, find your, um, So uh, how can I'm we on, find you out there? Yeah. The main place I'm at right now is on Instagram. It's uh, ASAP Training 19. And on there, I just try to post a lot of fitness motivation, yeah, informational stuff around workouts and how tos, how to do stuff. Also, a big focus on like mobility. I'm a real big advocate of like warming up to prime for the lift, just so you can get the most out of the lift. 
lot of people walk in the gym, they walk in the treadmill for five minutes, and they go right into their lift. And as we know, playing Crap. sports and coaching, yep. we always have the kids warm up. So why wouldn't you warm mm. up to go lift? And it kind of, for me, puts my mind into that state of, all right, we got to get ready to go. Just the same way if we were going to go prepare for a game or practice, I'm bringing that same energy into the weight room. You know, I want to be very intentional with the way I do stuff. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the body should move. It helps recover the body. It helps keep the body live and going. It helps keep the muscle around. So I definitely go through all my mobility stuff, kind of like I'm about to run a track meet. You know, I ran the 110 hurdles in high school and a year of college. And that type of workout is the mentality I bring in the weight room that gets me ready to you know, squats and heavy weight, deadlift, and, you know, go through my workouts. So. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so you personally, like, you don't stretch out, or do you, before you work out? I don't stretch before. It's more of a dynamic type of thing okay. where we're not going to sit and do a static stretch and hold for, you know, 15, 20 seconds. Uh -huh. We're going to do more of moving the muscle. It's going to be in a stretch, too, as well, but this is going to recruit some blood get the muscle prime, get your, you know, central nervous system going, get your body temperature up just yeah. so you get some blood flowing through the muscle and through the joints and everything feels better. So the movement stretches the muscle. Yes. And it's not just the muscle, it's the yes. tendons. And, and we'll gets... save the static stretching for post-workout. That's the recovery type of stuff. I see. I see. I, yes. I, there was a, there was somebody online who, who's, who worked out with somebody who was just like hardcore. And they said the first half hour, that guy would not touch a weight, and all he did was mo mobile type of movements. To to and the sweat that they got just from yeah. that was intense. Yes, and then they hit the weights. That's me. Yeah, like I see anybody that can <laughs> appreciate you. anybody that watches me go work out. They see that I spend my time. I do backward walks, walks on the treadmill just for knee health. Really helps out the knees, you know, especially for squatting and lunging sure. week after week for knee health. And then I'm going onto the turf or some type of mats or some type of warm up area. I'm spending a good 10 to 15 minutes, leg swings, hip circles, wow. 90 90s, yeah. PVC, PVC uh, pipe pass throughs with shoulder mobility. Yeah. Just really trying to prime the body, keep it moving. Our joints thrive in motion, you know, and I, feel, I believe if it's true, if you don't use it, you do lose it. Right. So why not keep it incorporated? Keep the body moving in all planes. Sure, sure. Like I said, longevity health is what we're here for. So you said you brought this mentality over from like uh, when you did sports. 100%, so yeah. when you when you did like what? First of all, um, football is your favorite sport. Yeah. Okay. So then, when did you start playing? I'm, I'm gonna take it back okay, to like okay. the, the history. Um, when did you start? Like, how old were you when, when you? Because your pops was a basketball player. Yes, he was. I'm assuming he didn't play much football. No, he didn't play so football. Kinda, I think he might have played like one year of middle school, and he's like, he's not for him. Was he a tall, lanky kind of guy? <laughs> he, yeah, yeah. He's okay. on the taller side. I'm a little, you know, end up being bigger than him. But I think he he said in high school he was six one. He okay. probably was like a buck sixty five or something like that. Right, right. His senior year, so. and, and pretty good ball player. Yeah, yeah, pretty okay. good ball player. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, College, anything. He ended up not playing in college. You know, he had uh, my older sister pretty early in life, so he went right okay. to the workforce type thing. Sure. But from what I heard, he had the, you know, the guys that I meet, the, old, the OGs. Uh -huh. Yeah. They said he could play. He had the they skills, said he huh? had, you know, every skill set to play in the next level and maybe higher up. But like five-tool player, yeah, but yeah. just, okay. But, but the situationally, family. yep. He just Where did he go to high school? Leaking Prep. Oh, oh yeah. okay. okay. Lincoln Prep, yeah. Okay. I can't even tell you what year he graduated, but. Yeah. And then you started playing football was your, was your first sport or did you play? Uh, no, basketball was, was your the first, first one as a kid. Especially as organized sports. Okay. And then that was probably around second grade, you know, playing like YMCA, transitioning to the AAU so about type stuff. seven, eight? Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. then soon after that, probably around <clears throat> fourth or fifth grade, yeah. I started playing uh, football. Okay. You okay. Know, went straight into kind didn't go flag, went straight into, you know, contact football. Dad didn't want you like, hey, let's, nah. just shoot, let's keep the hoops. Yeah, he, he was there for a little bit, and I begged him for some years to play. And then finally, we basically had the conversation. He was like, you're not afraid to get hurt? And I was like, hey, they got to catch me first. Uh, you know? man. So Baller at the age of yeah, what, eight first, or nine? First game, ran a little end around. <laughs> yeah, and that's And got the ball and scored. So for Your first play, first play, when you first touch the ball, first play, yep. when you're like eight or nine, you scored a touchdown. Yes, sir. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. All right. And he, uh, I think I convinced him there. So he was a fan of be playing after that. So. Heck yeah. <laughs> um, so not only do you fitness, I mean, you do training, but so as I was going, 
as I was creeping, I'm sorry, not creeping. It's creeping. It's not creeping. As I was going through your Instagram or whatever, uh, Facebook, you've done some competition. Yeah. Competitions out there, right? Okay. So yeah. yeah how do you, how did you get involved? How, how'd that all start? So I would say. What kind, what, kind of what kind of competition? So what first, kind of first, uh, we'll talk about the men's physique. It's bodybuilding. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. And the men's physique, you wear the board shorts. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. different posing. They have certain categories. And it derived from the open bodybuilding, you know, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Phil Heath, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler. Right on. That's the open bodybuilding. Okay. And from there, I believe it was like in the kind of like early to mid 2000s, they brought that men's physique into the category just because it's like everybody doesn't want to get that big. And that's I not super realistic. Right. So sure. like, hey, how can we serve the public where they can still work out, look nice, and still present themselves on stage. And and so, most of them, I'm assuming, are like super clean yeah. versus what the, the big giant monster bodybuilders yeah, do. Yeah, there's, okay. a, there's a big difference. And it, it depends on federation, too. Like if you go to NPC, that's untested. I see. If you do the natural federations, they drug test you and they do like a you know a poly test on you. I see. So, right, right. But, um, yeah, I got into it. Um, The first gym I started training at. Uh, and poly, in, sorry, poly, you mean the polypeptides? No, no, no. Poly you mean? meaning like the lie detector test. For for the natural federation, so they they test you if you're lying. Yeah, about what you could be using any type of PED or performance enhancement. Oh, they literally ask you questions and, yeah. and test you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. so they do an interview before. Wow, like, I figured they just you know take the blood or urine and then you know that's good enough. But no, they try to you know they want your words. Oh yeah, wow. Okay, Stuff okay, like that. Okay, so I actually and I competed in the MP NPC side for the fact of. Just how the judges are, mm -hmm. a guy in my size and stature at the time in the natural federation, I would have had to do open bodybuilding. Because you were so... Just muscular and bigger. Okay. They All would have right. been like, your height, weight, everything, you need to do open bodybuilding. So it's kind of like, as me and my coach made this decision, we decided to compete on the NPC side. Still is nat still is a natural. Okay. Still didn't take anything, but we're going in there with the bigger dogs because they right. can take whatever they want to. Wow. Okay. You know? Okay. So I ended up winning my first show, qualified for nationals, didn't make it down. This is at the end of 2019. Okay. Uh, end up just not going to nationals, kept working out, decided to compete again in 2021. Mm -hmm. So you have to go through a regional show, right. national show. And then once you place, I believe it's top two in your class in that national show, you get your pro card. Right. The whole goal is to get the pro card as a natural. Sure. So we competed in 2021. We won our regional show, got to nationals, didn't really understand how big nationals was. Meaning? Um, meaning the size of your class, the number of competitors, how okay. big the show was. Right. I was new to all of it. Right. And I ended up having, going from maybe having at a regional show, 20 guys total that come and did men's physique in that class to 150. Wow. So super competitive. All over the world yes. or all over the country? All the country. Okay, okay. And I mean, essentially every guy that was on stage had won that a previous show. Right. To get there. You I know see. what I'm saying? So I now see. we're kind of getting to the best of the best. I see. And in the NPC side, that's what feeds to the IFBB and the Olympia. Okay. Olympia is like the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's the goal is to get on that stage. For them or for you? For for me, for anybody that's okay. going there, that's, I mean, I would hope that's, you know, when we'll go to the top. That's okay. at least right. how I think. Sure, sure. You know, so- Got down there and got humbled really quick. Right. I got to see, you know, the difference of what was in my system and what was in their <laughs> system. And for the first time, I go back to class H, which is six one and above. Right. And I am literally the smallest competitor backstage. Now, <laughs> what about like cut? Were you the most cut? Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. How I did feel that... like I brought a good package to stage. Uh, right. The guy I work with is County Brooks. Shout out to County. He's my coach. Okay. He helped me with all the nutrition mm -hmm. and everything to get me down. Uh, for that show, I would say I'd be in prep for like five to six months just to do those two shows. And I probably started around 230 ish pounds, maybe 12 to 13 percent body fat. Right. At the end of it, I'm 206 pounds and I'm about 6.1. <sighs> oh, yeah. So you're we veiny. Were, oh, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shredded. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what's your what's your mind like? Because you're you're probably how many calories a day? Oh, yeah, I'm and, eating, and you're sipping water. If if that I'm right, right around two thousand calorie days, doing a lot of cardio, still working out, right? And you're very deprived of you know your carbs. And honestly, in those last four weeks are the hardest for me because they pull back from any type of additives, sugar, oh man, salts. 
Wow. So you're eating very, very clean. No lattes. All, no lattes. <laughs> I'm getting all my protein source from food, and that's why I implement my everyday life now. Because sure, sure. I just can't handle the whey protein. I'm a little lactose now. But you're just stripped down to the bare minimums, and you're still moving and working out. So it does affect your brain function a little bit. A big one for me is like body dysmorphia. It's something I'm aware of now. Right. But especially when I'm doing those shows, I'm in my head. and I'm thinking to myself, I'm not lean enough. Oh, man. There's no way I'm lean enough. Okay. And it's so crazy. After the show, I go back and look at the picture and I was like, I was freaking shredded. Right. <laughs> like at that point in time, how was I trapped in my mind to think that looking in the mirror? Right. And is that common? It's very common. I oh, see. yeah. It's it's common in that side of it. And just eat your thought process is just different being deprived of that much food. Are you moody? Just having to, oh, yeah. Really? Super moody. I, I would like to say. Don't want to make him mad. I told I'm you. I'm sure. <laughs> it was like, he's, you can tell his carbs are a little low. He's a little, <laughs> little agitated. He's on edge now. You know? Get him a so, cracker. Get him yeah, a cracker. Get him something. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah I can't imagine going that long and depriving, you know, to to try to compete because that's, yeah, just, that's, that's the discipline. Yeah. Right. And it's, you just get, for me, I gained some mental capacity from it. Sure. Because I put myself in a situation I had never been to before. Right. I deprived a lot of food. And there is no, like, food police. There is no, like, yeah, you're going to check in with your coach, but he's not with you 24-7. Right. right. You right. could go to McDonald's and chill. You could not eat this or whatever. But I'm just, the type of integrity and the type of intentionality I put into doing things, everything has to be perfect. So, you know, I'm going to eat all my food. I'm going to do my movement. I'm the guy that's going to, you know, have the discipline to do something when nobody's watching. And the, and the, the results come faster. Yeah, yeah. That's the beauty of they it. Work. Yeah. You can see it on stage, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. So you, for that process, even though you went through, you know, all that, you, you met almost all your goals yeah. with that, right? I, I mean, that's got to so. boost the confidence. Yeah, 100%. Big time. I mean, you, you prove to yourself you can do something you think you could do. And especially when you, you know, you have a coach in that situation, they can kind of push you further than you think you can. Right. Go. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you always kind of need the extra push and extra eye yeah. in that situation. So on top of that, mm -hmm. I also at the beginning of this year did a powerlifting meet. And this is, I would say, or what people say or tell me is this is the uniqueness about the way I look and the way I train. You know, I'm doing a powerlifting meet and you're supposed to be this big, big. overweight guy. They think of people that got the guys that look like strong men. Right. Don't Eddie come from Hall. Switzerland, Canada, yeah, boulders, yeah, up in yeah, 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 yeah. Those yeah. guys are freaking monsters. Yeah. They yeah. are monsters. You know, they're... And, hey, much respect to them. They yeah. work their asses off and do what they do. But I like the, the you know, you can look healthy, you can be shredded, and you still can move weight. Right. And that's what, it, you know, I want to look the part and be the part. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. As a kid, I always, like, you know, was super infatuated with my superheroes and action figures and everything. So I'm like, okay, I have to ask who, which, which ones? It it was really at the Ken? time. Was it Ken? Up, <laughs> no, 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 Ken. It was more so, um, it was a mixture of like Superman, right on. Batman. It's my boy. And then really a, a bunch of Dragon Ball Z. Oh. And this is like fresh release Dragon Ball Z. Not. So is this where we start with the anime? Yeah. Is Dragon Ball Z is that, yeah, is that considered anime? anime? Yep. The early that stages. Was after me. That was like after I was me. um watching it where they were like showing it live and they're like turning into Super Saiyan. Like the first version of it. Okay. You understand know? that they don't understand. I, I do you. a little bit. My <laughs> my my kiddo was yeah. It's but. all good. But it was basically with Dragon Ball Z is you get these super jacked, you know. Yeah. They have the ability to read power markers and they end up having to fight against other worlds basically yeah or the people come they see their readings and basically the super saiyans are supposed to be the superior race but they can adapt and get stronger to whatever energy or force comes toward them now is that based off of the cards or are you talking <laughs> video or what, what are, <laughs> this is all cartoon <laughs> anime like, okay uh, what, what, Chris, Ball Z never they, really had like playing cards okay who had the cards was it pokemon yeah pokemon. what am i thinking okay 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 okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. all right my kiddo had all the cards, and she, you know, I, I never got. I understand. Yeah, 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 I yeah, tell yeah, you, yeah. who were the buff ones out there was the the Ninja Turtles. 
Yeah, they were up to the, yeah, they, they, were they, they, were pack. Yeah, yeah, they, they got were they got huge. bigger in time. <laughs> yeah, they, I think they were hitting. And some, they didn't even work out. Yeah, they just ate pizza. Uh, they they did they did their they forms. pizza and then they had their they worked on. Their, oh yeah, ma, their master shredder, <laughs> right? Shredder. Splinter. <laughs> oh, master splinter. That's shredder right, was the enemy. Yeah, that's shredder right. was the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. You guys, the only way you could comprehend it is probably like He Man. Uh, Skeletor, the the way those guys looked back in the eighties. Oh, I had a Stretch oh, Armstrong. The, yeah, no, those. That's are, Remember no, the Stretch no. Armstrong? He was yes, he stretched. He but was, no, but I I know what you mean, Marcos. Those, I know those what you mean. are the guys that you could refer to as the huge and bulky guys. He Man, um, some of the GI Skeletor. They're all buff. Yeah. Hey, yeah, those are all buff. Yeah, I remember those. Yep. Yeah, yeah but that, that was after me. That was gotcha. Yeah, those okay. were. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So I mean, did the power after me? I've always. Trained heavy. I always enjoy training heavy. Um, it's something I've done, especially as a football player. Yeah. It's always, you know, how much can you bench, bro? How much you squat? You know, you're in that competition all the time. Right. And it's something that, like, I adhere to well and my body sure. took in well and I got a lot of results from. So did a pilot to me at the beginning of the year. Um, this was in Missouri and we did it right outside of St. Louis. The meet that was up here ended up filling up. Uh, so I didn't get registered in time, but I end up a week after. <laughs> It was actually Super Bowl when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl okay. earlier in the year. And uh, end up going six, was it 629? 629 on squat. Um, I did 407 on bench. Those two were uh, state records in the 242 it? class. That's it? Yeah, that's okay. it. Right. And then <laughs> uh, the one I was, I would say, disappointed in, I'm happy that I put the number up in the meet. But we were honestly aiming for a bigger deadlift. That's like my favorite lift. Mm -hmm. And we ended up doing 683 on deadlift. Jesus. But honestly, we were looking for like a 730, 740. So, did you say 680? Yeah, 683. That's like a small deadlift. car. So, Jesus. Can, can you explain for the, for the ones who don't understand what a deadlift is? Like my partner here. <laughs> <laughs> so, a, um, a deadlift, and I'm going to tell you in my version of a deadlift because I, I pull conventional deadlift. And the cheat code Sounds out there serious. is sumo deadlift, which is still allowed in, in meets. It's plenty legal, mm -hmm. but it's supposed to be like the easier version of the deadlift. And mainly women pull deadlift. And there are men that pull deadlift. They're very good. I think some of the best <clears throat> deadlift in the world pull sumo. But it's like the old thing of like conventionals for men. Like it's the real deadlift. Yeah. So uh, deadlift is when the bar is it has at least a 45 pound plate on the ground because you want that diameter. It's the same height. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? From the bar height. And then you're basically keeping your back as rigid as possible in a straight motion. Yeah. And you want to hinge at your hips because you don't want to pull through your lower back. That's how people get hurt. Doing yeah. Deadlifts. I do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then deadlift? doing yes. a deadlift is very functional for everyday life. Cause then out? you learn how to pick stuff up correctly. So you're not kicking your back up and doing all that. But anyways, yeah. from there you're grabbing the bar keeping the bar close to your legs yeah. and you're picking it up and it usually ends up right around hip height. Okay. So yeah, usually this is the one that people can load typically the most weight on. So has a bar ever snapped? You ever seen that happen? Ooh, is that even possible? For I don't a bar think to snap? a bar can snap, but it can definitely bend right in half. Oh, bend if in it's half. The, and that's the, um, there are certain types of bars you use when using more weight and there's yeah. a certain type of plates that you use that have the Killigan plates that are red. Those weigh 55 each. And then they have the coated with like blue is 45. I think it's yellow is 35. But the, but the same, but the same size. Yeah, same size. Uh, okay. Those yeah, are yeah. The kilograms. Okay. okay. Where this, the metal ones are pounds and those are just up to 45 pounds. Right. Usually. Yeah. So the type of bars, they have like stiff bars, they have deadlifting bars, they have squat bars. So if you were to load maybe on a regular gym bar that's just in the gym, those kilogram plates in excess, you could easily bend, bend the bar. Yeah. 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 So. The only bars I like are the, the, the nudie bars or the chocolate bars. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate bars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the only bars that I know. Yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, uh, good for you, coach. That's, Appreciate that's, it. that's awesome. That's awesome. And I was going to ask you if you had a coach, uh, does he still, is he still work with you now? Yeah. And I mean, this is a, a close friend of mine as well. Okay. Um, what I was saying earlier is the first gym I started training at was that in 2015 or 2016, as I was, you know, opening up the business and getting my feet wet. Yeah. I met my coach, Keanu Brooks, and he's a workout partner. We've done some business together. 
but he also is really intelligent on the nutrition side. Okay. So he coaches me in that. And if I were to need any type of nutritional coaching, that'd be one of the first guys I would be talking to for the powerlifting side of it. Mm -hmm. I use, um, my guy's name is Peyton under Peyton performance on Instagram. Okay. And he's the one that coached me through my powerlifting meet. And he's just, I mean, it's, it's easier for me to work with coaches because I coach people myself. So then I understand, you know, protocol, check-ins. I see the merit around them. So I'm going to do all this stuff anyways. I'm going to listen to everything the coach says. Yeah. But it just, it's like I said, having that extra eye and having somebody that is, uh, has the specificity, you know, in the realm, I mean, the the greatest, you know, once I got past my own ego, because I, <laughs> sometimes I can think I know everything, right, you know, right. and once I get past that. I have and, kids like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once I got past that side of it and was like, hey, Ronnie Coleman had a coach. You know, the best half coaches. So what am I? Humble yourself, bro. Right. Ronnie Coleman you know? was a bad dude. That's my guy. God. Lightweight, baby. God. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what made you get into the fitness? Like, what was your job before Man. you became, you know? So, the official job on the books would have been from a home advisor. Okay. All right. And which is a, which is a, um, it's like Angie's list. Yeah. yeah if it's I'm like right. Angie's okay. list and they, you know, something with the contractor and they feed the contractors leads to get them more business. Okay. And you go through their system and like you pay a certain amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. They send you so many leads. Okay. You know, that type of thing. And I honestly, um, a big push to really dive into the uh, the fitness industry was I got fired from a uh, home advisor. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They, um, I think I was behind by either one sale or one potential sale. So you had a, you had a quota. Yeah. I had a little quota and it was after I believe 90 days and those sales didn't go through for Your me. Your first 90 days. Yeah. First 90 days. Okay. So, okay. Okay. And I, I mean, realistically it wasn't, I wasn't super passionate about the job. I was right. collecting a check, mm -hmm. but I still wanted to, you know, succeed make, and succeed keep and it. And and keep there's a the lot job. of potential to, you know, make in those sales too, but it didn't match up at the time. I don't know if my energy, energy didn't, you know, match cause this wasn't showing that much passion for whatever, but yeah, they brought me in at, uh, you know, 5 PM in the office. I worked all Friday. They brought me at the end of the day and, uh, you know, I'm making all these calls and grinding us and they fired me. And I think it was just in that fashion, you know, and I'd said to myself, I'll never give you my opportunity to do this again. So start working for myself as a personal trainer. Uh, shout out to my guy, Cardell. I played college ball with. Mm -hmm. He's the one that kind of, you know, was always pushing it to me because he, even when we were in college working out, yeah. I was kind of the first resource of, Hey, you know, what supplement should I grab? Or, Hey, what do I, how do I do this in the weight room or what lift or how should I go about this? What foods I should eat? Right. I was one of the first guys I always came to and asked. So after, you know, got out of college and, you know, got done with the home advisor situation, I remember getting a call from him. He's like, Hey man, what are you, what are you doing now? Like, I'm like, man, I'm trying to climb this ladder, you know, got this business administration degree from Pittsburgh State University. I'm trying to, you know, go that route. I'm thinking I'm supposed to be in a suit and tie and I'm trying right. to force that and everybody around me is like, man, do personal training and your world's the gym. Yeah. My yeah. yeah. You know, it, that was the best part of my day. I was going to work at these jobs, surviving those days. And the best part was going to the gym right afterwards. Yeah. Right. So end up, uh, he, you know, he broke down, you know, getting my LLC and, you know, getting certified and how to go about the gyms and rent and the whole, all the situations. And I just, I just ran with it, man. Another part of that too, in that, you know, hearing that from him, and then I saw a Steve Harvey video, oh. and he talked about jumping off the cliff, and he's like, "If you want to make your parachute open, you can make it open. You might hit some, you know, some branches on the way down. You know, you might hit a boulder on the way down, but if that parachute open, you only know to know if your parachute is going to open is if you jump. Right. So I was just like, right. hey. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's go I, th I thought you were going to mention the Steve Harvey <clears throat> story of how he, you know, went to the comedy, you know, store or, you know, the oh, gotcha, and okay. then, you know, he, he had a, I think he was, he had a cubicle job or something like that. And he told the boss he was going to quit. And I think the do the boss said, no, you, you're not going to quit. You're not going to go anywhere. And he, and he got all mad and he <laughs> went out and, and, yeah. and did it. But then he, he ran some, through some tough times. I'm assuming once you started, it just wasn't gravy. No, nah. I mean, it, it took a while. To, how long did it take you to get your first client? I got, honestly got my first client pretty quick. I feel like the big part for me yeah. that I take advantage of the most is the social media. 
ever since I started, I posted yeah. on social media. It was yeah. more Facebook then. Yep. But even now to this day, um, I post a lot more on Instagram. Instagram's a platform I understand the, the best right now. Well, sure. And yeah, it's those, essentially they're free commercials. Yep. You know, you're sharing what you do. Yeah. You're showing people, you know, from the nutrition side to the weight training side. Right. And I, the main thing for me is I'm going to lead by example. And I'm going to show people this, the stuff I tell you to do, I'm going to practice it myself, you know, practice what you preach. I think. Right. I want to be the epitome of what I think my philosophies are. So right on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that happened with me too, with the sports art that I do. No, no gallery wanted to show my work and I had no agent and the work was mediocre and the only thing I had was Facebook and then eventually Instagram. Yeah. And I would just post work in progress, cr- work in progress pieces. Yeah. And at first it was like Ninja Turtles. It was actually Ninja Turtles and Disney stuff. Nice. And, and, and then the Royals started to hit and I started, I was doing, I was doing Royals art and that's what actually helped get me my first couple customers, you know, yeah. so I, I totally get it. Yeah. So I don't know if, you know, yeah, so he's a local artist here in, in the KC and he has a lot of work. This, these, Prince that he we have behind him is the kind of artwork that he does. Nice, it's very impressive. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah, he does really good. Really and good and those are like those that. are commission pieces that, you know, when I first started, I just dreamed of having a commission and never got them and then put the work in and then finally, you know, but I didn't I didn't quit my job or get fired or anything. Yeah, yeah. But I still have my job because this stuff doesn't pay, you know, right. yet the big right, money. Right, right. But I, I, I totally get the you know, the the short start, you know, and it's kinda like scared because i haven't taken the, taken the big plunge but, gotcha. so but i i totally get it and respect it so yeah. a lot of comedians do that too they they quit their jobs and, and roll the dice Just and go for it yeah yeah get a better yeah get yeah. a bet on yourself right right and like you said before i mean this essentially i'm an entrepreneur too and as you said it's not all just gravy no you it's know not. it's i mean i probably legit probably want to quit probably three times really like i was a day an hour away from being like, yeah, I'll just, I guess, go back to, you know, let me, let me, advisor. let me go get my suit and tie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me go, let me have that home advisor. They still home advisor. <laughs> I totally but get yeah, it. Yeah. It's, um, you know, you keep betting on yourself. Uh, luckily I've had the support with my, you know, from my family and, you know, close friends just kind of, you know, keep pushing me. You, you know? religious guy? Not super religious. Definitely okay. believe in the Lord upstairs, but, yeah. um, I could practice, you know, a little more. Yeah. For me, it was, it was, it was, Many days and many nights of saying a little prayer here and there, just to just to try to keep me on track, yeah. you know, and and to believe in myself and the work. So I get it. For sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, Coach. Uh, so you and I we met through, uh, you know, going back to the, the North days when you were coaching, and you know, I wanted to ask you this: when uh, so you had Marcos, Will, Danny, when yeah. those guys are. How do you how do you feel as coaching? How do you feel about kids playing both sides of the ball? Did did you play both sides of the ball? Yes. In high school? Yes. Did you? Yeah. Um, I played free safety and wide receiver. I didn't really leave the field. I played almost every special team. I think they gave me kickoff off. That's the only oh, yeah. special team I had off. My senior year, yeah. Okay. Stayed on the field. I believed in it and I grew up in an era of everybody played that way. Like right. even quarterbacks play both sides of the ball. So, because you know. Will, you know, and Marcos, they're linebackers. Yeah. You know, and then Marcos would play corner. Uh, and that's the way when we brought them up, when we coached them, that's, you know, we, you know, at that sixth, seventh, eighth grade, yeah, playing both sides of the ball. But then when high school come around and, you know, Coach Schneider and I, we were a little upset that they didn't get to play on the defensive side. Yeah. You know, Marcos was your running back. And great running back. You had Will, great quarterback. You know, one two punch right there. But man, I think if things could have been a little different, I think if they were on the other side. But I understand I, that they don't want to get hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely you know? agree with you. Um, I mean, were there was there ever a time that you were like, Coach, just throw Marcos in there for a little bit, or just throw Will, or you know, just not the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, Will, was, Will was, was a really great quarterback in my Will opinion. Was a stud. For what he was for the team, we had to get him. As less contact as possible. That's why we didn't <laughs> well, keep we're, him. And we're talking I mean, about Will was, Schneider, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Will is one of the, I would say, one of the better players I've ever coached. Man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's, He's the, good the mind. Yeah. You know, he. you could tell the kid is a true student of the game. And 
especially, you know, just bringing the passion. Like he really cared. And he's yeah. and he won a natural born leader. And, yeah. you know, he's just a great everything. kid too. Just, to, just, and to, yeah, we went to get him as less contact as possible. He was already getting beat up at quarterback. Is it because the <laughs> O-line? Is that the O-line? O-line just wasn't, yeah. wasn't well coached yet. Right. Had some smaller kids, some inexperienced kids. And sure. we were, you know, he was a tough kid. I remember seeing him his freshman year getting, Getting beat up. And, ass <laughs> and he got yeah. back up and he didn't point a finger at nobody else. No. Nope. Right. Yeah. That's kind of key. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 You can tell, I, I met him before he jumped on the field and you could just tell he was a good kid. Oh, yeah. And then I forgot when I, my first game, I saw him and they were getting, they were getting beat and he brought him back almost to the point of winning the game. And it was just phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, he was a good, he was a good, that, good player. What year? I don't. I don't know. I think maybe he was. Was that junior. when we were coaching? Oh, it was in high school. He was in high school. Oh, we were up in the stands. And, and do you remember that, Mark? That game. He brought him. He brought him back almost to win. And there's a couple key catches he that they weren't made. And he I'm trying mean, to remember that. He game. put him on the shoulder and he he, he brought him back. It was a great That's game. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, uh, speaking of a high school, um, I'd like to announce that uh, Aaron Sawyer will be inducted into uh, Shawnee Mission North's. Hall of Fame uh, as a multi-sport athlete, specifically the Keisha track and field. You were a hurdle state champion. Yes, sir. That's great. Yeah. And um, yeah, this will take place at Shawnee Mission North's Hall of Fame basketball game on February 2nd of 2024. And I, you know, we'd like to be the first to congratulate yeah, congrats. you. Congrats. Thank that. you wow. so much. Yeah. And it's, like um, I said, we'll definitely be there and. the uh, if I need you put the gold jacket on you, I'll, I'll help you. I can help you with that. Perfect. It's a Hall of Fame. Right? I'm glad That's, you guys will be there. Yeah. I know it's the NFL. I know, but so this is our first. This is the first Hall of Famer on the on the big podcast, uh, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, yes. right on. Yes. Okay, another. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, do you know anyone else that's in the Hall of Fame there at North? Personally, um, I think they inducted last year Storm Simmons and Mac Brown. And they okay. both were in school when I was there. Uh, oh, okay. Storm was a year younger than me. She was a you know baller. What she sport? played three sport? I believe she played. She definitely did basketball and track. And then in the fall, did she play volleyball? Maybe. Yeah, I don't, I'm not. And yeah, just a good athlete. I think she ended up at University of Central Missouri, hmm. and you know ran some track there. But yeah, just she was the girl that. Could jump out there and run the 300 hurdles and then run the 400 back to back and win them both. <laughs> yeah, wow. she That's was awesome. that type of stud. And then Mac Brown, which coached by, um, what is Coach Brown's first name? I can't think of it right now. Sam Brown. Okay. They were there my freshman year in 04. And he was a varsity, you know, quarterback, you know, coach's son. Mm-hmm. And he was a pretty good athlete at Cheyenne Mission North. And yeah, so he got, they, they got inducted that first or last year. And then, yeah, I think I'm the next class of induction. I'm not sure who else is in that class with me either. Uh, actually, um, who is it, Mark? Uh, Goodburn. Uh, Kyle. Kyle, nice. No, not Kyle. Sarah. Oh. Yes. Man, you just disrespected Kyle. <laughs> that's his, that's her son, actually. Oh, man. Yeah, but Sarah Goodburn, right? Sorry, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, she's being in, also inducted into no. the Hall of Fame with you. As well, so and so she was she was uh, the uh, North School Board, and she's resigning, and that's how my our son, my son Mario, yeah. won uh, just here in November school board for North, so he'll be running the show. Okay. As she retires, he's running the show. There. So she's getting inducted. Yeah, and she's for getting to, athletics uh, for uh, just um, I'm not really sure what it is, but. Okay. It's yeah. She's a big part of North. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And her her right. kids went to North as well. I see. And she's school board and yeah. So she's done a lot for the community as well. Cool. So congratulations her. to her. Yeah. yeah. Um. So speaking of a uh, Hall of Fame, is Doctor Phil in the Hall of Fame? No. Because <laughs> you know that he graduated from. Yeah, North, we tried right? to get him to speak at our graduation. Doctor Phil went to North. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that right? I didn't yes. know that. I don't know. I thought he's a hey, what's, person. What's the rumor, Chris, about? He yeah. hates it. <laughs> he hates North? Yeah. So apparently he hates Shawnee Mission North. That is a rumor. Hmm. Yeah, yeah a, he got bullied yeah. here, apparently. Oh, is so, that what it is? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that, uh, Dr. Phil. <laughs> Dr. Phil ain't going to watch this. <laughs> hey, thanks, Chris. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, wow. So, oh, what do you think of the new weight room there at North? I think it's great. 
right? You know, it's... Have you had a chance to go in there and kind of... I have looked around. I haven't got to work out yet. Oh, okay. So we're going to... Yeah, I'm going to make sure I get a workout in there. Oh, maybe Hall of Famers get a free pass, cool yeah, don't they? You need... Before before your name is announced, go in there and just <laughs> hit everything you can. <laughs> yes. Yeah, come out all shredded. And, that'd be dope. And speaking of shredded, this I know you like to eat these while you work out. Oh, yeah. But I know... Uh, you only take seven? Yeah, serving at, size. We uh, keep it, seven at a, a week? Keep it, you know, a, a week. <laughs> is that what it is? Because <laughs> you got me hooked on these. Yeah, yeah. I saw, that it, I saw it on Instagram. You were eating them while you were speaking. I was like, I don't remember what you were talking about, but he's eating trolleys, and I'm going to try some of these <laughs> as well. Yeah. yeah, the purpose of it is, it, uh, first of all, I crave that taste when I train, kind of that sweet, sugary, sour yeah. taste. On top of that, um, it's this whole thing about BCAs that it kind of is – I'm kind of mocking it mm -hmm. because I don't truly believe in BCAs. Okay. I believe that if you get an adequate amount of protein, you get your amino acids. That's what branch chain amino acids. There you okay. Go. Therefore, you know, it's more of a, to me, a marketing scheme. Now, ah. somebody that's in a harder diet, that's eating super clean, that's kind of like the little sugar fix because BCAs are super sweet. They taste good, mm -hmm. especially doing a workout. So you're like, oh, I can drink these. Yeah. But it's honestly probably more like expensive pee. Than actually doing what it, it says it's doing on your body. So, yeah. yeah. Have, have you ever met anybody famous? Um, I met, I've met a few people. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Let's speak on it. Um, so, I've had the opportunity to do some commercial work. Okay. You know, I got to meet, uh, you know, our, our savior. I know they're having a hard year, but I got to meet Patrick Mahomes. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about our Jesus. Savior. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I, 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 I have him right, I have I right up there. Really in the football yeah. world, our, yeah. the football oh, world okay. our Savior. All right. All right. Okay. I was like, man, he met you him. Mean, what did you do? How yeah. did you do that? Okay. So and you got then, to meet you got to meet Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I got to meet Patrick Mahomes. And that was for that state, was that a State Farm commercial? Yeah, it was, it's a couple of commercials I've been in and got to do some work with them. Uh, okay. The one that I really got to interact with him earlier on is mm -hmm. after his rookie season was it was a community American commercial. And they had me like really front and center, but in our in between time, in between takes, you know, he would be shooting the shit with us, talking really? super humble guy, super down to earth. And it's just so crazy to be around somebody that is you know, so big now, so yeah, yeah. big now. I mean, even at the time he was big, cause it's like, we've never seen anybody play football like this before. And you know, yeah. Super down to right. dude. Yeah. You know, uh, so Marcos had done some commercials and I don't know if he got to meet Patrick Mahomes, but I think they, you guys might've, uh, shared numbers cause they are looking for receivers at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have to bring the cleats back out. There we go. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Maybe uh, you could do that, that was that's probably one of the more famous, you know. And yes, you know, of course you got Travis Kelsey and When'd you start? When did you start going into like commercial acting or was that is that was that the goal is commercial acting or were we wanting to get to the theater got, and the This is a stumble upon. Okay. This and is how'd you, um, how'd you do that? How'd you stumble? So I remember this is what, twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen. Okay. Um, I had somebody mention me in a Facebook status about needing some football players for a commercial. Oh, okay. All right. And, you know, I went to the link, signed up for it, and didn't really think much of it. Right. Got an email back super fast. And like, hey, you don't even need to come in. Hey, you're in. Show up to this fitting at this time. Show up to the fitting. You know, all that stuff goes well. We shoot the commercial. And it's cool because we were in the Chiefs locker room, too. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, we got to shoot okay. the commercial in there. And I was just an extra, and I ended up getting a little more money because I got so much screen time for that commercial. I see. Yeah, I yeah. see. So it was a stumble upon, and then through that link, I was like, well, you guys get paid for this. And I'm like, okay, cool. And they're like, no, no, no. You got to do the paperwork through us. For RT Talent, this is our agency. That's the type of thing. So I have an agent now that gets me work I see. for those type of commercials. Has it been pretty steady? It is. It's it's on and off. Um, for my stature, I usually typically get football player roles. Uh, okay, you know what I'm saying. So right. it's more seasonal around football season, early summer. They'll start shooting that type of stuff for the season. So I see. Yeah. I see. And no voice work because you got that uh, no voice super work silky. Yet, but, okay. uh, yep. You guys got me intrigued. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, um, so. <laughs> a man, a man of your size. Do you ever get challenged? Do people ever just in, want to challenge in, in, in anything? That's a good question. You know, you know, uh, probably probably more at a club versus yeah, grocery store. You get you get more ego. Yeah, you know how because there's always that little the big guy doesn't get tested because he's the big guy. 
Okay. You know, so some guys have the mentality or at the bar, they get a little liquid courage. They might mm-hmm. try. I try to stay pretty calm. I, I feel like my energy will kind of let you know. You know, I think anybody's energy will kind of let you know. So I'm a pretty friendly guy. You know, I'm not going to take any shit from anybody. But, right. You know, I try to, uh, you know, definitely be welcoming. I'm never looking yeah. for trouble, but you'll definitely get tested, you know, in the weight room. You know, the ego stuff, puff the chest out. Mm-hmm. People tend to seem like they're trying to tighten up when I'm around, especially guys. <laughs> they do the tighten up. The, okay. Puff the chest out around, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, you always it's always been some challenging type stuff, especially when it comes to men, sports, athletics, lifting weights. Like, everybody's looking to challenge yeah. or see the proof. So Anybody ever ask you if you wanted a job to uh, security or uh, yep. what's, what's the uh, – uh, what's the word? Um, ba- uh, like a bouncer. Yeah, there you go. yeah. So yeah. I, I've done some uh, have some bouncing security type work. Okay. In the past, throughout the years, um, sometimes I'll, you know, I got a couple guys that call me up if they have anything available. Just every once in a while, I haven't. I don't have anything like super steady where I'm going to every other night or anything. But every once in a while on the weekends, I'll do yeah. some security work and everything like that. Cool, cool. Do you have there ever been a time where, I mean, I don't want. I don't know how to say this. You're working out and you pull something. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, in, I mean, that kind of is a part of. Not to say it's a part of it, but if you're training yourself hard enough and pushing yourself in athletics and weight training, whatever, there's gonna be some little nicks and nacks. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, we're not robots. We're still humans. So right. it's um, I can't. I want to say it's a part of. You don't have to get hurt, but the small strains. That stuff is kind of a part of it. And it's more about how can you be self-aware of your body and how can you implement procedures to take care of it through mobility, stretching, foam rolling, you know, dry needling, massage. Mm-hmm. Um, just the other night I got dry or uh, some cupping done Cup. just to help my back. And, right. just, you know, I'm all about the as holistic and as pure version <clears throat> of trying to recover and take care of yourself. So. Yeah, how does, what's the cupping about? What, what is so that, it? Most of any of that stuff is more about the blood flow and getting that lymphatic system to get circulated. And usually this happens through some type of stimulation, cupping, dry kneeling, stem, massage, just getting that new oxygenated blood into the area so it can pull out that, you know, the inflammation, all mm-hmm. the bad tissue and get it recovered. So. Yeah. What is the... Uh, the ice bath come in. Do you, do you, are you a fan I, of that? I, I'm definitely a fan of it. Um, I was just talking to a guy at the gym today and I was like, the next thing I want to do is start cold plunging in the morning. And I'm here. I'm, I'm liking it more so from the mental early in the morning, mental, it like wakes you up. You get like a euphoric, almost feeling off coming off the ice bath early in the morning. That's what they say. Now, as far as for, you know, the work outside of it, it's a lot of inflammation, in the joints, in the, in the muscle. Yeah. Um, I know some people take cold showers too, as well, you know, that type of thing, but there is, I can't tell you all of the benefits, but there's definitely there's something more about research. It. There's something about this. It's a lot of people doing it. I yeah. Mean, you see guys on Instagram, like, you know, it's 4 AM. They're hitting the ice with a kettlebell. They get it cold in there too. I believe in college. I was just doing about like 50 degrees. Some of those guys are getting down to <laughs> in the thirties. Yeah. Some cold yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I did a series like a week of just cold showers, just n- no hot at all. And it took you. You weren't like, paying your bill. <laughs> well, <laughs> so you're trying to air whatever it. it takes. <laughs> it helped my body. Uh, but it was, it, after it was done, it's a whole different feeling. You know, you yeah. put about a, a minute of jet. It was just a minute at yeah, first. That's all you really 30 need, yeah. seconds at first. Then it was a minute, the next, you know, shower. And then, yeah, it's it's a weird experience. Um, mm. A friend of mine, um, one of the Gracies, um, he did he does the full ice plunge, and I, I follow him and see I mean, and just gets in, and then they just sit there, and I'm just like I'm, I'm done. I would just die. Are you I'd pass go out shot. from doing that. <laughs> no, your shot? body your body can actually. It's, just, it's the same as those uh, polar bear plunges. Yeah, when they jump out in the lake and it's frozen, it's the same sort of feeling. But these guys do it. Like almost every day, every day. Yeah. it's a whole, it, it does something to your body. Yeah. Yeah. In a good way. In a good way. Yeah. 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 It's supposed to help with some, you know, testosterone production for men and 
Yeah, just from a mental capacity too, like having to challenge yourself to do right. something like that, doing something hard every day that you know you don't want to do, but you know you get benefit out of. So right, yeah, yeah. no, it's it's a whole different ball game. Yep, <clears throat> yep. Um, do you ever watch that show? Um, what was it? Uh, the Rock. Uh, Young Rock. Ballers. Young Rock. Young Rock. Did you ever watch Young that? Rock? Yeah, it was it was it was a uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. He would tell his story. Mm-hmm. He would sit back and tell his. He's talking to somebody, and he tells a story, and it takes him back to when his dad, you know, when when he grew up, the way he grew up, his dad was a wrestler. He became a wrestler. Yeah. His grandfather was a wrestler. Well, there, uh, there's an actor from here, from KCK. What's his name, Marcos Joseph? Uh, yeah, um, and he's he's a really really big guy. I mean, he uh, he got the part to play the Rock's dad. And he's local. He, okay. he actually, I think his dad is uh, was a police officer in KCK. Joseph Anderson. Joseph Anderson. Gotcha. Yeah, and yeah, I didn't know if you're familiar with him, I, but he's. I'm not. I haven't no? seen that. I definitely want to. Yeah, watch we'll have him to. Now. We'll have to. We'll have to show you a, a picture of him. Or, but he's another one that I know. I he I know people that know him, and I would like to get him on the show as well. You know, but yeah, he's. So he's trying to he's trying to he's trying to pull referrals from you. So if you you know somebody (laughs) semi famous or famous, you know Patrick Mahomes. You said you know Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, Yeah. I like get get ready for that hit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, Coach, uh, we've you know unfortunately we've come to the end of our show. Okay, but I appreciate you coming in, and uh, I'm sorry, but I I I have to call you Coach, man. It's all good. I'll accept Coach. You can keep calling me Coach. Yeah, it's, coach. I, I I tried to call you Aaron and it just doesn't sound right. <laughs> I, unless I call you A.A. A. Ron or yeah, so there you something go. like that. Yeah. So you, you taking on new clients? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm taking on new clients right now online and in person. So the best way to get a hold of you is hit you through. Yeah, uh, we do on the Instagram. Instagram. Uh, yep. Number one. You on Facebook too? Facebook too okay. as well. It's uh, Aaron Sawyer. Okay. Uh, not Sawyer, but Sawyer. And then, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, I'm assuming most of the older ones, older customers go through Facebook. Is that how yeah. it usually works? And then we'll have a website ready too. Okay. Like a little bit, but yeah. And the way, the range of age of clients you're taking? Good question. Good question. Typically, yeah? um, most clients I work with is 18 and above. Okay. Typically, if they are younger than 18, it's usually athletics. We're not really doing too much like personal lifestyle training. It's usually athletics. Right. Um, but I mean, there is no limit on the age. I've worked with, you know, people in their 60s and 70s. Right. You know, everybody can get a benefit from weight training and eating the right type of food, you know, and just implementing certain type of habits in your life, you know, so. Well, we had a, we had a nice fat hamburger last night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. a fan Those of hamburgers. But, but that's, that's, that's once a month for them, gotcha. for, for that place. Uh, for you? That place, for that place. Yeah, that's about once a month. month. Once a month you get that hamburger? At the flea market. Maybe and, we uh, eat it raw. If we eat it raw, it'd be it was, all right. It was almost. It was getting there. So, no, it was a good burger. Yeah. It was a good burger. But um, what's your what's your favorite restaurant? Ooh. Yeah, there's different categories, right? Yeah, I mean, there's pizza, there's ribs, there's burgers. I mean, we gonna narrow that down, or we just yeah. favorite 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 favorite. Ooh. Is there one that you hit once a week? Because I know you say you don't eat fast food. I don't eat too much fast. Too food. much fast like food. The, what I count as fast food is like me going to Chick Fil A and getting okay. like a. Every once in a while, I'll get like a spicy chicken sandwich. Okay, you settle know? down. Do they have grilled? So, is it yeah. is it grilled? grilled it's like an eight dollar sandwich. Yeah. They have grilled chicken, but do they have a spicy grilled chicken sandwich? Ooch. Ooh, I don't know I if they have. See, they have why 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 won't they do that? Because there's been times that I've stopped by there and yeah, I mean they have the spicy chicken sandwich, but that not would be grilled. Good. I think that would be their good. Odds you know? on what they're gonna make the money on. Yeah, I know if that thing is dipped in that oil, it's usually gonna make it more money. Ah, but yeah, that's you know? true. <laughs> yeah. But favorite here, um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go Bowling's Chinese restaurant. Nice, and just because I've been eating it for years now, my sister took us there when me and my brother were kids, and I've consistently ate Bowling's every year since. So, right well, on. which one is? I know there's one in the Plaza, right? Yeah, I mean I've been to all of them. The one I mainly went oh, yeah. to was off Metcalf. You ever eaten in pine and bamboo? I think once. Yeah. Yeah. I guess he wasn't a fan of that one. That was my spot. <laughs> That's my still used to, my spot. Used to be my spot. I now, go there. It's, now it's Chins on um shout out to Chins. Um over there Midland Drive, Renner Road. Oh, okay. okay. Out there out west a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I and I, I I can't confirm it, but it looked like the dude in the back, cigarette. <laughs> 
It's like hitting that walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's authentic. Yeah, well, that's yeah authentic. that was like a no of, English. They're just spitting Chinese left <laughs> and right. Kinda, uh, well, we go to Sunny Delight. Well, that's Sunny Delight. Sunny Delight. What's that's it an, that's Sunny an drink. <laughs> <laughs> Sunny China. But what's cool is they got Hispanics Sunny back there working. Sunny so. China. Sunny China. I've never heard of that. Where is that? Are you serious? Right on, it's right here, right, right across from uh, Sunfresh. Uh, oh, the, the strip mall, it's CVS. Uh, there's an O'Reilly's. There's a Subway. What city we in? We're in oh, Shawnee. Shawnee. Yeah, can't. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. Yeah. Street. No, no. Right across from Amigos. Anyway, KCK. You didn't okay. try it. KCK. Yeah. No. KCK. No. no I got. I got. You talking about? It's yeah. good. You yeah. know what? You yeah. know where I'm at? Yeah. 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 That's, I know that's where a good at. spot. Nope. Anyway. Again, thank you, Coach, yeah, for coming in. You. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming by. It's a pleasure uh, meeting you. It's great. Yep. You too. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to the Big Modcast. Uh, until then, adios. Mm -hmm.